So we were speaking about the Holy Spirit in the liturgy. And we said that the Christian liturgy is guided by the Holy Spirit. Through the inspiration given by the Holy Spirit, the liturgy developed in the church. So the author of liturgy in the church is Holy Spirit. Through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the fathers developed the liturgy in the church. Then we have reached up to, it is the power of the Holy Spirit that changed chaos to cosmos at creation. So we are we were slowly discussing how the spirit works in the salvation history from the very moment of creation till the incarnation and the whole salvation history how the spirit is working and still how spirit is active in the church through the liturgy so it is the power of the holy spirit that changed chaos to cosmos at creation genesis 1 2 changed water to wine at the wedding feast at cana that is john chapter 2 1 to 11 changed bread and wine to Christ's flesh and blood in the Eucharistic celebration and will change our flesh and blood to immortal spiritual bodies in the resurrection. So this is a, uh, just a narration how the spirit is still active in the church through the liturgy and how the spirit transforms us. So we go ahead. In every liturgical action, the Holy Spirit is sent in order to bring us into communion with Christ and so to form his body. We said that the church is the mystical body of Christ in order to make us members of this uh, mystical body in every sacrament. In every sacrament, the Holy Spirit is sent so that we become one with Christ through the Holy Spirit. The mission of the Holy Spirit in the liturgy of the church is to prepare the assembly to encounter Christ. So, the what is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? The purpose of the Holy Spirit in the liturgy is to prepare the assembly or the community or the church. To prepare the community or the church to encounter Christ. So, first duty of the Holy Spirit is to prepare the church to encounter Christ. Then again, <clears throat> to recall and manifest Christ to the faithful. To recall and manifest Christ. Recall the salvific action done by Christ and Christ himself to present Christ himself to the faithful gathered. That is the second duty of the Holy Spirit or the then third one to make the saving work of Christ present and active by his transforming power and to make the gift of communion bear fruit in the church. So the third uh, action of the Holy Spirit in the church is the saving work of Christ to, to present the saving work of Christ and active by his transforming power. So by transforming us, the Holy Spirit presents the saving work of Christ to us. So second one is to, to make the saving work of Christ manifest. To recall and manifest the Christ to the faithful. That means to present Christ or helping the faithful to understand the salvific action done by Christ. So first one is the preparation. Holy Spirit prepares our heart or our mind to understand what is or to encounter Jesus. Then the second action is to recall what the what Jesus had done for us, the salvific action. The third one to present and active by his transforming power and to make the gift of communion bear fruit in the church that means the holy spirit presents to us the presents to us the salvific effect through its transforming power so the holy spirit it has uh, holy spirit has the transforming power from a sinful person to a holy person he transforms us and presents the sal salvation to us and by presenting this salvation to us holy spirit tries to 
bring fruit out of it or bear fruit in the church the completion of liturgy is done by the holy spirit the holy spirit completes the liturgy as he completes and perfects the trinitarian economy of salvation so uh, the father the creator is the son of god jesus the savior and the holy spirit is the one who completes this salvific action so the trinitarian economy of salvation father created son savior then the completion of this salvific action is brought to by the holy spirit in the same way all three of father son and the holy spirit was active in the salvific action and it comes to its completion through the holy spirit in the same way a liturgical action comes to its completion through the holy spirit for example that means through a sacrament we receive the holy spirit and through this holy spirit working in us we are transformed into the mystical or a member of the mystical body of christ that means we are saved okay am i clear to you yeah the spirit reveals christ and christ reveals the father so the holy spirit within us <coughs> the holy spirit within us reveals christ to us and through christ we come to know the come to know father <coughs> the father sends the son and the son together with the father sends the holy spirit to the church so the holy spirit within us helps us to recognize jesus christ and through christ we come to know about god the father and in the other way the father sends the son and together with the father the son and the father sends the holy spirit to the church in the liturgy of the church god the father is blessed and adored as the source of all the blessings of creation and salvation with which he has blessed us in his son in order to give us the spirit so in the salvation history god is the source of all blessings and we receive the blessings of the father through the son which is the holy spirit clear father sends the son and through the son we receive the holy spirit and through this holy spirit or through the sacraments we receive the holy spirit and we are transformed and we become one with the body of christ that is the church or the mystical body of christ so this is the action of holy spirit this is a relation of holy spirit within the liturgy so the father creator he sends the son and through the son we receive the holy spirit and the holy spirit makes a transformation within us and through this transformation we become one with the body of christ that is the mystical body of christ can refer it on ccc 1110 catechism of the catholic church 1110 now we go to the early christian writers what they speak about uh, liturgy so the early christian writers always retained the meaning 
cultic for the word liturgy so it always given uh, gave the uh, meaning cultic for the term liturgy cultic means something related to worship sacrifice so liturgy has a cultic meaning in the early christian writings according to the sense of didache didache is one of the oldest writings according to the sense of didache 151 reference you can write 151 didache 151 which affirms that bishops and deacons also perform the liturgia of prophets and teachers so in the didache 151 we read like this the bishops and deacons also perform the liturgia of prophets and teachers that means didache affirms that the bishops and the deacons who are ordained in the church they also perform the liturgical actions done by the prophets that what was in the old testament they are, they are also following in the same line of liturgy okay then the apostolic tradition 10 apostolic tradition that is another one uh, writings the apostolic tradition 10 claims that clerical ordination is for the purpose of liturgy clerical ordination is for the purpose of liturgy says apostolic tradition number 10 so in the didache it is said the bishops and the deacons also perform the liturgy of prophets and teachers those are the forefathers then the apostolic tradition claims that clerical ordination is for the purpose of liturgy so the bishops were ordained with the purpose of leading the liturgy of the church okay then for the churches in the east which have consistently kept up this usage liturgia means the sacred rites in general so the church of the east mainly they kept up the meaning liturgia for liturgia they meant the rites sacred rites in general and the eucharistic celebration in particular for the church of east the term liturgia means the eucharistic celebration in particular so by the term liturgia or liturgy they mean eucharistic celebration and the also sacred rites of the church so these two meanings first one is eucharistic celebration and second one is sacred rites in general so that was the understanding of the eastern churches then again in the latin church on the other hand use the term like officio divina opus divinum and sacri ritus so the term liturgy was not used for some 6th uh, till 6th century the term was not there in the latin tradition the term liturgy was mainly used in the eastern tradition to denote the eucharistic celebration whereas on the other hand the latin tradition they used the terms like a officio divina o f f i c i o o f f i c i o divina d i v i n a o f f i c i o next term is d i v i n a officio divina or opus divinum o p u s d i v i n u m o p u s d i v i 
N U M Opus Divinum and Sacri S A C R I S A C R I Sacri Ritus R I T U S So these were the terms used by the Latin church to denote the sacred actions or the liturgical actions of the church. There was no term called liturgy in the Latin church for some time. The use of the... Is it 6th yeah, I will come, I will come. The use of the word liturgy in the context of the mass did not appear in the Latin West until the 6th century. So, until the 6th century, they never used the term liturgy in their writings or in a, uh, to denote the sacred actions or the Eucharistic celebration. Clear to you, brother? Yeah. So, instead of liturgy, they were using officio divina, opus divinum and sacri ritus to denote the Eucharistic celebration or, the, or other sacred actions of the church till 6th century when the word liturgy returned into use in the 18th century it referred to the entire cultic activity of the church and in the 18th century from 6th century onwards they were using the term liturgy and in the 18th century the term liturgy takes up the meaning it includes all the liturgical actions of the Church. Earlier we said in the Eastern Church the liturgy, the term liturgy denotes Eucharistic celebration. Then in the Latin Church they never used the term lit liturgy till the 16th, 6th century. Then in the 18th century they started using this uh, lit term liturgy for all the liturgical actions of the church. And it continued, it is that usage which has been confirmed in the documents of the Second Vatican Council and in 1983 Code of Canon Law. So the term liturgy is to be is used in the, with this sense, that means all the liturgical actions of the church. With this sense it is used in the uh, Vatican Council and also in the Code of Canon Laws. The word liturgy appeared for the first time in official and Latin documents during the pontificate of Gregory the 16th. So during the time of Pope Gregory the 16th, for the first time the term liturgy appeared in the Latin documents. That means after 6th century it may. Okay. The next heading from spiritual cult to spiritualism. So, in the early Christian community, liturgia in the New Testament writings meant the whole Christian life. So, in the New Testament, in the early Christian community or the first Christian community, the term liturgia means the whole Christian life. In the first Christian community, the term liturgia means or it includes the whole Christian life. <clears throat> From the Acts of the Apostles, we learn the early life of the church was firmly based on two key points. That is, one, the celebration of the Eucharist and the life of charity. So, this was the center of the 
Christian life in the first Christian community, the celebration of Eucharist and a life of charity or sharing. So in the first Christian community, liturgy means it includes the whole Christian life. The whole Christian life was centered on two things. From the Acts of the Apostles, we understand the celebration of the Eucharist and the life of charity. So for them, liturgy means the cell, not only the celebration of Eucharist, but their day-to-day -day life of sharing or charity. Okay. The concept of liturgy gradually changed. Even in the Christian community, slowly the meaning of the term liturgy changed. The communal character of Christian cult lost its importance. Slowly, slowly the life of charity diminished, not diminished, the meaning from the, the, uh, the life of charity was taken away from the meaning of liturgy. And the term liturgy includes only the cultic act done by the priest or the president of the assembly. So in the beginning we said in the first Christian community liturgy means both the Eucharistic celebration and the life of charity slowly the term lost its meaning life of charity is taken away from that and the liturgy means only the cultic act done by the priest or the liturgical act done by the priest or the president of the assembly do you follow me okay So, liturgy is used to signify almost exclusively action of the priest. So, for even in the first Christian community after a certain period, it was used only to denote the actions done by the priest. Liturgy was an action of priest easily passed down to the rubrical notion of liturgy for the following reasons. First one, the Tridentine influence. So, from the time of Trend, Council of Trent, that is called a Trendine influence. So, the, the Trendine influence is that understanding of sacraments ex opera operato. That means sacraments as actions are performed to produce grace. So, sacraments are actions performed to produce grace. Emphasis was on the matter and form, an exaggerated emphasis on the rites. So, the importance was given to the matter and form and the rituals of the sacred actions. First point is the Tridentine influence. First point is the Tridentine, T R I D E N T I N E, Tridentine influence. T R I D E N T I N E. Ex opera opera. That means the importance is or the stress is given to the matter and form of the sacraments and an exaggerated emphasis on the rights of the sacraments. Then in the 16th and, and we are coming again, in the 16th and the 18th centuries, the emphasis, <coughs> the emphasis was on the ritualistic understanding of liturgy. So in the beginning, the importance was given to the matter and form and the rites of the liturgy. Then in the 18th century or in the 16th to 18th century, the ritualistic understanding of liturgy came in. That means the external uh, rituals of the sacrament was given more importance. They 
gave more importance to highly ornated celebrations that means the with a with, with a lot of pomp they celebrated the sacraments they gave importance for style fashionable in art especially in the architecture in europe so the external expressions were given more importance regarding the vestments the art the expressions of that used even for architecture more importance was given in the 16th and 18th centuries and the third point is reactions against asceticism reactions against asceticism hope you understand what is the meaning of asceticism so asceticism they may means that they avoid all kinds of forms and external decorations and everything okay and they uh, stick on to a kind of poverty and simplicity a simple way of celebration so that was the uh, mind of the ascetics so this uh, in the liturgy there came up lot of external expressions and external form as a reaction against this asceticism so in the uh, the ascetics they they were for a simple celebration but on the other hand some other people they were for a great uh, way of uh, celebrations okay <coughs> so what was the mind of this uh, uh, celebration to show or to manifest the majesty of god so by celebrating in a very great scale they are trying to proclaim that god is great so god is something great so by such celebrations they try to create an respect and adoration consequently the right was the main concern so what was the uh, problem in this slowly the internal spirit is lost and the external paraphernalia increased and they through this they try to show that or they try to proclaim that god is something great which has to be respected and adored so this was the reasons why the external celebrations increased and more importance was given to the external rituals and rites of the sacraments of sacred celebrations in the church now we go to the next part the definitions of liturgy before vatican second so we are going to speak we are going to define what is liturgy so far we were seeing what is the purpose of liturgy what is the meaning of the term how the liturgy was celebrated in the church and what are the uh, relation between the new testament and old testament liturgy then the place of holy spirit in the liturgical celebration all these things we were uh, discussing now we are going to define what is liturgy we will be speaking about around 10 definitions plus mediator day and sacro sacro sanctum concilium that is the definition given by vatican second so before that we will see around 10 definitions given by different theologians and literature